Good afternoon, Warriors fans. It's Chase Johnston here. And guess what? Warriors Wednesday has returned. We're going to preview a couple of the hotshot new players uh, joining the Warriors and including some returning ones, but we're going to start things off. He was drafted 182nd overall by the Pittsburgh Penguins. He has one heck of a story to tell in regards to his family and athletics. His name is Luke Devlin. Luke, thank you so much for joining us and congratulations. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy to be on. So, Luke, uh, you are uh, committed to the Warriors this year. We're going to have that Pittsburgh Penguins logo along with your Cornell logo on the rosters every game. We're very excited to have you. For those of you who don't know Luke Devlin, uh, he is a dual citizen, born in Memphis, Tennessee, traveled all around, now spending really the last 13 years in greater Toronto. Uh, for those of you who don't know the name Devlin, uh, Luke's father, Matt Devlin, uh, the broadcaster with the Toronto Raptors, current uh, fill-in broadcaster with the Toronto Blue Jays. And as a broadcaster, you move around a lot. I've already changed uh, postal codes about three or four times in the last five years, so I can relate. Uh, but uh, let's open things up with uh, Luke. Um, Luke, you, you're a guy who comes from a family with a, a large amount of uh, basketball players and baseball players. But you and your brother, Ian, you guys are hockey players. You're both BCHL players committed to Ivy League colleges Talk to me about your path into hockey from when you were born. Yeah, so uh, we were both born down south in the U.S. Uh, wouldn't really call it a big hockey market. Uh, so uh, kind of as we were moving around, and to be honest, I didn't even know what hockey was until I moved to Toronto. I was about five years old. Um, up until that point, I was just playing baseball, basketball. Just I mean, I was five, so just some of the classic American sports. Um, and then I got to school, and uh, like the day I showed up, everyone was just talking about hockey, hockey, hockey. No one wanted to talk about anything else. So I go home. I was like, what's hockey? Uh, and then I just wanted to sign up immediately. So um, I think about a month after we moved here, uh, my parents signed my brother and I up for uh, skating lessons. And then that just morphed into us to going to hockey camps when we were really young. And we kind of just fell in love with it immediately. And ever since we just that was always a sport that we wanted to play. I always played a lot of other sports growing up. Um, but hockey was always my, my first love in the sporting world and definitely the one that I liked the most. I don't want to make this interview the interview about the family outside of Luke Devlin, but let's talk about your brother. Uh, he yeah. is the, now the captain of the Coquitlam Express, committed to Princeton University. You're committed to Cornell University. Uh, Ian's the older brother. Was there a big sibling rivalry growing up between the two of you? Yeah, I mean, we're we're two two of the most competitive guys you'll meet. We always try to outdo each other, um, and I think that that's yeah something I'm definitely looking forward to in the future. Not only uh, March 11th of uh, 2023, but uh, also then the years after uh, Princeton versus Cornell. Those should be fun games, uh, definitely for the family at least. But yeah, it was uh, having him around has been great. Always growing up, you know, he's always just been he's always been bigger, stronger, faster than me. So just chasing him when I was really young, I think it definitely made me better. You know, growing up with your family and, of course, both your mom and dad's side are mainly exclusively American, uh, even though you're a dual citizen. You know, you have family that are playing baseball, family are playing basketball. You have uncles that are NCAA Division One coaches uh, in a variety of schools, including schools that have hockey programs in Big Ten, Luke. And here you and uh, your brother Ian are uh, committing to Ivy League schools. What was the decisions like for you and your brother Ian to commit to an Ivy League school instead of a school that's... Uh, like a Big Ten conference school? Um, yeah, I think going through the recruiting process, it was um, it was a really cool experience getting to go on visits. Unfortunately, because of COVID, um, I wasn't able to go on probably as many visits as, you know, I would have hoped for. Um, but being I was able to tour Cornell and see uh, what they had. And um, they had incredible fan base. Um, it's only four hours away from home. Uh, it's an Ivy League education and then hockey there. They're pretty much always somewhere around the top of the leaderboard. So um, I think from that aspect, there wasn't uh, there's not a whole lot more you could ask for. And then um, obviously my parents value education a ton. And uh, my brother and I totally. Yeah, me, my brother and I have always uh, worked really hard in school. So I think at the point that we got to at our hockey, I think it was really I think it it was really good that we got to take the chance to use our hockey to go to a really great school that we probably may, may not have been able to get into otherwise. 
For those who Warriors fans that don't know, uh, alumni Matthew Steinberg is a star forward of Cornell and uh, starting goaltender this season, Justin Katz, recently committed to Cornell as well. So uh, the Ivy League pipeline is strong uh, with the Warriors, not only the BCHL. Uh, let's uh, talk about your game. Uh, you were named captain your grade 12 year. You played uh, with St. Andrews College, very prestigious school out of Greater Toronto. Uh, you were named captain. Talk to me about the past year. What did you learn? Because you didn't just play for St. Andrews College. You played a little bit in the USHL with Des Moines. Uh, you also played in the U.S. National Development Team. And what was the last 12 months like for you? Yeah, it was uh, It was definitely really busy, um, but probably the most fun I've had playing hockey in the last 12 months. It was, it was really awesome. Um, last summer, uh, getting to go over to Slovakia uh, for with the U.S. Holinka team was really special. Um, and then that kind of just went right into this past season um, with St. Andrews. And then I was fortunate enough to be named captain by my teammates, um, which was tremendous honor. Um, and I think that that was um, a really great opportunity for me, um, being able to not that having that necessarily makes you a leader, but um, being in one of those named leadership positions, I think that that uh, it was a really great challenge for me. Uh, and then, yeah, towards the end of the year, um, just because prep the season doesn't go as long as a lot of the other junior leagues. So we ended in about March um, and then the USHL still had a few more games uh, left in their schedule. So um, I was lucky enough to be asked to go down to play uh, for Des Moines in the USHL. And then, yeah, pretty much immediately after that, uh, the national development team asked if I asked if I could fill in for a couple games against Youngstown for a weekend. Um, and unfortunately we were just shy of the playoffs and, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a really, really cool 12 months and yeah, definitely busy, but with hockey, but couldn't ask for anything better. You're really getting the trifecta experience here between USHL, yeah. BCHL, yeah. you know, prep, uh, here we are. Um, you know, and uh, I, as a broadcaster, I can sit here and goo goo gaga over your dad's profession, being the voice uh, in the NBA in Toronto and, and now the MLB. Uh, but uh, we all know who the biggest celebrity in your family is, Luke. That we um, do. Yeah, so uh, you you have another brother named Jack. Uh, Jack, um, I knew about your brother Jack before I knew you. I did not know really the connection between uh, Jack and your father. Uh, I actually saw uh, him hit a half-court shot that went viral on Twitter. Well, graduating student manager Jack Devlin is all smiles right now on the Iowa sideline. Why? Because this just happened. Everything is fallen tonight. Look at the response from the team. This is unbelievable. It's the half court shot. The team goes nuts. I mean, they love it. Uh, during senior night, uh, and your brother was attending uh, the he was attending the REACH program with uh, the Iowa NCAA, and he was the team manager for the basketball team. Uh, and there's a feature uh, that uh, I recommend all Warriors fans watch. I'll post it in the comments of this video, an incredible feature on Luke's brother, uh, Jack Devlin. Uh, talk to me about the REACH program and what Jack does with Iowa. Yeah, so the, uh, the REACH program... It's a, it's a special program. It's at the University of Iowa, um, and it's for, I want to say there's around 60, 60 70 students there, um, and it's for kids or, yeah, now adults with uh, learning and intellectual disabilities, and it essentially gives people like Jack the opportunity to have um, a, a, like a normal college experience, and so um, Jack, for the last four years, he has uh, been living on campus um, in a regular dorm room with other students there um, and he takes classes that predominantly cover life skills such as cooking budgeting um, really just ways ways for Jack to learn how to live by himself um, and the progression that he's made as a person there has been absolutely incredible he's really risen to the occasion I couldn't be more proud of him he's become so much more independent since he's gotten there um, and once Jack's always loved sports his whole life. So, uh, I mean, growing up, he was always on the bench for me and my brother helping at the gate, filling up water bottles. He just loves being around the game. So um, when he got there, Iowa doesn't have a hockey team, um, but they do have a basketball team, which is another love of Jack's. And um, Frank McCaffrey, the uh, the head coach of Iowa, he's at, he's friends with uh, one of my uncles that's also a coach uh, in basketball. And through that connection, they were kind of able to introduce themselves to Jack um, and Jack was able to help out. I want to say first season was three years ago, two or three years ago. 
Um, and the team absolutely embraced him, loved him very much. Uh, and then he kind of just kept on getting asked back um, to help out during the season. And then he graduated this year from the reach program. Um, but luckily enough, he, uh, he's been asked to do a full-time internship with them next year. Um, so he'll be back in Iowa city. Um, he'll be living in an apartment with a roommate, uh, and he'll be helping out with the team again next season. So, uh, he couldn't be more happy. I think he leaves in, uh, he actually leaves next week. So he's pretty pumped. That's awesome. Uh, and, uh, for those who don't know the reach program, you want to, um, learn more about the reach program, Google it. I'm telling you right now, every single division one college should be doing some of this. Canadian colleges should be doing something at the REACH program. Incredibly, uh, incredibly uh, inspiring stuff. And uh, to no surprise, uh, even though Jack's already graduated, uh, you know, the, the Hawkeyes want him back because uh, that guy just fuels that team. So here's the situation now. You mentioned this March 11th. The Warriors host the Coquitlam Express. It's going to be the Devlin versus Devlin game. Luke will play against his brother on bchl ice now march happens to be when march madness so it's kind of a win-win here for jack first off if the iowa hawkeyes basketball team makes the march madness tournament he's going to be busy with that and that's going to be an exciting time for jack but if the iowa hawkeyes don't make the playoffs we want to make sure that jack comes to royal lepage place we'll get him to drop the puck i want him on the broadcast with me and I want him to help me do some color commentary watching his two brothers play against each other. How's that sound? Yeah, no, that would be, that'd be awesome. And yeah, don't want, I mean, obviously I'm rooting for the Hawkeyes, but that'd also be a pretty special night. So either way, I think it's a win-win for Jack. Awesome. And, uh, you know, maybe one quick last little message here to uh, the Warriors fans of what you're looking forward to. I know that your draft experience was special. You're thrilled with that. Uh, but you're going to be playing with another guy who is drafted, Ben McDonald to the Seattle Kraken. Have you had any type of communication with Ben so far? Um, yeah. So last summer, um, I uh, I met Ben briefly at uh, the U.S. Uh, National Camp, the Select 17 Festival. So during that uh, process for the Holinka team, we met um, and we talked a little bit. Little did we know that uh, we'd be playing on the same team the year after, but um, yeah, I haven't gotten to know him too well, just cause he's, he's a Boston kid. I'm from Toronto and our past really haven't crossed that much, but, um, I've talked to him a little bit, uh, throughout the summer and yeah, it's, uh, definitely going to be a really exciting year. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think that we should be a really great team. So I think Warriors fans should be excited. For really the first time in Warriors history, I mean, disregarding the Okanagan Cup tournament uh, during the pandemic, the Warriors will have two NHL drafted players suit up for them this season in Luke Devlin and Ben McDonald. Luke, thank you so much for taking time, and we look forward to seeing you in September. Yeah, thank you for having me.